Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to our Unity RPG tutorial series. Now, at the moment in our game, when we are attacking our enemies, it's a little bit hard to actually hit them. Because what, we're, what we have going on is, we walk over towards one of them here. Yeah, well, I was trying to chase that guy, but I didn't want to. But we do this little kind of stab effect, and if we don't get it exactly right on them, it doesn't actually hurt them. Okay, that, that guy just happened to walk down at the wrong moment, and he does the same thing there. But what happens is we stick our little sword out and it's incredibly hard to actually accurately hit these enemies which is a little bit of a problem because it, see there we go I'm a little bit just a little bit too far away and then we can't really tell it's hard to see really what's going on so we're going to make a little bit of a change to how our uh, attacks work and um, we don't actually need to do any coding or anything it's just changing how uh, some stuff animates in the game basically is all we're going to do uh, and it'll make it feel a little bit more satisfying when we hit an enemy. So, first thing we're going to do is add a little bit more art to the game. So I have this uh, new swing effects added to our resource pack, so I'm going to drag this, oh, no, I'm going to click it and then drag it into the game here. And then we're going to need to make some changes to it, same as we've done for importing all of our objects in the game. So we'll set our pixels per unit to 16. There's two separate little uh, drawings on here, so we're going to use uh, multiple sprites. Uh, we don't need mip maps, so we can turn filter mode to point. Make our max size, we can actually set this to be the smaller value because we can see down here it's 12 by 25, so 32 more than covers that. And true color, and then we'll hit apply. And then we'll go into our sprite editor. And then in here, we're just going to make these be uh, automatically cut up. So we'll go to slice up here, it's set to be automatic already. So we'll hit slice, and then it carves up to the exact size of the objects in the world and we're gonna this time we're actually gonna rename them so we can distinguish between them we're only gonna use this bigger one for the moment but in the future we're gonna use the other one too so we'll rename this one to be swing big and then this one down here we'll rename to be swing small and we'll apply these changes go back into the game uh, and we switch over to our scene view I just want to zoom in on the player so I'll just double click the player here and it'll zoom in onto him like that and if we go to our swing effects, if we hit our little arrows at the side, we're going to drag the big one and grab it and drag it into the world here and pop it down. Now obviously because of our sorting layers it's dropped behind everything else so we can't see it at the moment. So let's change that. So we'll use our sorting layer, we'll drag it onto the player sorting layer. So it's the exact same as what the player currently is. And then what we're going to do the same that we did with our sword and use positioning to determine which direction it should be. Or which... Uh, visibility it should have because sometimes we want it to appear behind the player and sometimes in front so this is uh, if i just switch the movement this is basically going to be what will happen is when we swing our sword instead of the sword itself doing damage to the enemies this swing arc will actually do the damage and it's a very common technique used uh, in games in general for the actual weapon itself not to do the damage but the kind of the motion which is what this little uh, arc kind of represents, is the motion of the sword. And that's the area where you want your enemy to take damage. So if we wanted to take damage, obviously we're going to need to give it a collider for to make it a trigger for the enemies to, 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 uh, to use our heart enemy script that we've created already. Uh, but obviously if we were to make a box collider, we'll end up with this area here and this area here being given damage and that's kind of outside the range of it so that'll look weird a circle collider will obviously do the same it'll look kind of weird so what we're going to use is something we haven't used before but a polygon collider so we're going to add the component here polygon collider 2d and what this does is it creates this kind of rough shape that kind of roughly it tries to guess uh, based on the shape of the object and tries to fit it in but it's not quite right so what we can do is actually adjust this shape by going to edit collider up here and hitting this big button then what happens is we can click on any individual corner and we can just drag it into position like this so that roughly speaking it gets the right kind of shape of this little arc here so there we go that's basically all we need to do with that uh, so we'll turn that off then so that we are back to having a solid object we want to make sure that this is a trigger because we have um, our heart enemy scripts uses a trigger zone to uh, attack an enemy and if we're going to make this do damage to the enemy obviously we need to make this have the heart enemy script 
Uh, so we have it filled in with all these blanks here now. So we could go ahead and fill these in one by one ourselves. But another way to do it, because we already have this on our sword that, that at the moment is doing damage, if we drop down our player here and go to our sword, uh, we don't want our sword anymore to do any damage. So we're actually going to remove this box collider from us. So we'll remove that component. We're going to remove the heart enemy script as well. But before we do that, we can take all these uh, values that we already have set up and use them on our swing. So if we go to the little gear icon up here and drop this down and go to copy component, if we go back to our swing big and hit the gear icon there, we can, if we go down to paste component values here, it'll actually paste in all the things that are on our sword into uh, our swing arc here. So the next thing we want to do is make this uh, a child of the player. So we'll go back up to here and make it drag it on top of the player so it's a child of that. We don't want to make it a child of the weapon itself because our weapon is having different rotations applied to it and we don't want to do that with our swing. We we want to apply rotations whenever we do an attack uh, but relative to where the player is facing not just relative to where the sword is. Um, so what we'll do is then back on our sword we can remove the heart enemy script from that so we'll remove that component. Uh, we're also going to remove this hit point because we're no longer using this for our sword to attack and we were using our hit point to choose a point where our um, our like little damage effect was appearing within the world. So I'm going to delete that hit point. Uh, it's okay, it'll break the prefab because we're going to re resave that in a second. But on our swing big, we now need to add a new hit point to this. So we're going to, just as a point for the damage effect to uh, take place into the world. So we're going to make a child by clicking create empty. We'll call this hit point and we'll move it to say round about there and then on our swing big we where we have now a missing slot here we'll drag our hit point into there like that uh, and now we have we have our swing all set up so now we need to apply it to our animations so obviously when we're walking around in the world normally we're not going to want to see this swing in the world. So first thing we're going to do is disable that by unchecking the little active uh, game object box up there. So now that's deactivated in the world. And if we go back to our player and I go down to our animation window down here, so you need to click on the player again, there we go. So we want to go to our ta attack animations. So let's go to attack up here first. So now what we want to happen um, we hit our little record button so we can start seeing where the player would be facing. So the player is facing this way and our sword is pointing up. So what we'll do is, at this point we need to activate our swing. So we'll go to the swing object in the hierarchy here and we'll turn it back on like this. Obviously it's facing the wrong way here so I'm going to move it roughly into position there like that. Then I'm going to set the Z value to be one, uh, 180 so it flips all the way around. Then I'm going to line it up so it's just kind of roughly behind the sword like that. And then we re remember we want to set our Z value so we make sure that it does definitely appear behind the player. So we want to set this to be uh, 1 because minus 1 uh, should make it appear in front of the player but it's not at, at the moment. But that's okay. I think it's because of the way the certain layers are set up at the moment. Uh, but that's fine so we want it to appear behind the player like that. Um, and then our sword. So now what's happening is when we attack up like that, we've got this big swing that will be hurting the enemies rather than just the sword itself. So let's do the same for, our, actually, no, sorry. Uh, one other thing we need to do is, if we were to do this at the moment, so say for example, if we were to run the game, so I'm just gonna stop that recording and we'll hit run here. What'll happen is, if we attack upwards, we get that big swipe just left in the air for the whole time that our sword is pointing up. So we obviously don't want that. We only want the swipe to appear for a split second in the game. So if we go back to our animation again, so our attack up animation, we'll turn back on our recording. Uh, what we wanted to do is appear for a short little fraction of time and then disappear. So obviously the way to do that is just as we turned it on, if we move along the timeline and we're gonna to move to just this first little marker here, so we go to there and what we'll do is just deactivate it again uh, and our object becomes deactivated but because our our swipe up we have it set say if we go back to our player just to check here on our player controller we have attack time set to be half a second 
So what's happening then is our animation is only running for about maybe a tenth of a second here. So what will happen is our sword will become active, it will deactivate, but because we, we our animation is supposed to last for, for half a second, it will keep looping through the same little bit again and again. So it will just keep showing this same attack swing here. So that's not what we want. What we want, so then we, we know we want our animation should last longer than half a second. So half a second here is at 0 30 because we're running at 60 frames a second. So at the uh, frame 30 is half a second. So let's just go ahead on to a whole full second, which is right here. And what we're going to do is just simply, as long as we have swing big activated here, just say we'll turn the swing big on and then off again. So what happens is for, it goes off here and then it stays off and it just knows that after one second it should still be off basically it's just to fill in the timeline uh, so that we're not adding any extra movement or anything like that but it's just to fill it in so that it knows uh, um, so that it knows it won't repeat itself over and over so now if we were to save this or not save it but to start running this what should happen is we'll attack upwards and we get a little swipe like that and it actually looks like we've got a bit of movement on our character and now if we attack this bad guy here it's way easier to attack him and do some actual damage to him as opposed to just our regular way of doing it like that so let's do the same thing now for our uh, three other directions so for player attack right we're going to first of all activate our swing like that move it into position roughly uh, set the z value to 90 for when we're attacking right. Put it into roughly the right kind of area like that. Move on to just a little bit in the timeline. Deactivate it. Move to one second. Activate and deactivate again. And that's our animation set up like that. So we'll do... Oh, no. I don't want to start a new one. We'll go to player attack left. Go back to the very start of it so that our player moves into the right position. Again, we'll activate our swing move it roughly to there and then minus 90 and then position it like that go ahead in our timeline turn it off go ahead to one second on and off again and then finally when we're facing down like this we want to activate move this roughly into position there and we can see um it's kind of appearing uh, below the player's legs there so that looks kind of weird so we'll set this to be um, no, uh, minus one and we'll fix that in a second now but so we'll just do the rest of our animation so we'll deactivate that and then at one second here we'll reactivate it again and I actually just remember I didn't set the Z value for the other directions did I so when we're facing left it doesn't matter because it's not overlapping the player and when we're facing right we want to make sure it appears behind the player so we'll set it to be one and that should be all our animation set so if I just deactivate this here uh, we just want to make sure that our sword is set to be on order layer one I think should be the right way to do this let's just make sure yeah so order layer one makes it appear above the player like that but when we attack up it appears behind the layer because of our Z value. So perfect, that's exactly what we wanted to do. Okay, so now we have our four different attack animation directions set up. So if we play the game here, we should see now that it's much easier to actually attack our enemies. So we can see we get a nice little uh, effect and we're actually doing some damage like this. Oh, that was just bad aiming. So now it actually looks like, you can see when we do an attack, it actually looks like our sword is swinging and attacking the enemies instead of just kind of just like lightly stabbing at them whereas now we're doing a little attack and it's actually doing some damage and it makes it feel just a little bit more like you're actually doing something in the game apart from getting killed of course but there you go that's uh that's how we can improve our attack animations and make things just a little bit nicer in our game so thanks for watching this episode i'll be back soon with some more rpg tutorial goodness in the very near future
Thanks for checking out this episode, and if you want even more Games Plus James goodness, make sure you hit those subscribe and like buttons. You can also find me on Twitter and Facebook by following the links on screen, where you can find out all the latest news about the channel. And if you want to help support the show, check out the Patreon page, where you can get exclusive content in return for helping make the channel even better. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more.